This is a demonstration on how to set up a grid over a reference photo in Google Drawings that you can then later on use as uh, your reference photo for the grid drawing technique. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is find your reference photo. I um, just did a Google image search for a picture of Gina Rodriguez, an actress. I found this picture, decided that was going to be the one I wanted to use for my portrait projects. Um, just double check, make sure that the image size is a strong enough or a large enough file size for you to use. Uh, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, this is 1200 by 1200 pixels. That's a nice large image. I won't have any sort of like graininess or pixelation. If you use an image that's smaller, if the numbers here are smaller than 500, you may have issues with a uh, low image resolution. So just double check that. Um, I am downloading that, so I did save image as, and I saved it to my computer, and then I uploaded it to my Google Drive. So you'll see, I now have it, if I go to my Google Drive, this picture is right there. That's the one that I'm going to work with. So now that I'm in my Google Drive, I'm going to go ahead and open up Google Drawings. I click up here on the left, I click New, I go down to More, and I choose Google Drawings. Now it's going to open up a new paper for me, a new drawing. And the first thing I need to do is set up this page or this, let's imagine this drawing surface or this area as uh, the piece of paper that I'm going to be working on for my actual project. And I want to make sure it matches the dimensions of the paper I'm working with. So if I'm working on um, a piece of drawing paper that I've cut to eight by 10, I'm going to make sure that I set up this rectangle to be exactly 8 by 10 so that my grid on my reference photo matches my grid on my drawing. I'm going to use a file and then go down to page setup to set up my paper. Change it from standard to custom and this is going to be where you type in 8 by 10. Now this is also where you have to think about, are you drawing an image that is portrait orientation or landscape orientation? So um, typing in 8 by 10, this is the width, this is the height. So this is going to be portrait orientation where it's a taller piece of paper. Um, but if you look at your reference photo, double check to see what it would fit. So the photo I'm using I think would fit a, a portrait orientation page very well but um, other images like this one over to the side here, that would fit better on a landscape if you weren't planning on cropping out all the, the background or sides. Okay, so eight by 10, I set up my measurements. Now it just really depends on what your, your piece of paper is. So um, just double check what kind of paper you're drawing on first and measure that before you set this up. Okay, apply. There it is, 8 by 10. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a table to make my grid. So go up to Insert, Table, and I'm going to be using um, a grid that is a box every one inch, or the boxes are all one inch boxes. So I have to match the page that I set up. So I go over 8 and down 10. And again, your numbers might be different if you have a different size piece of paper. So I'm just making it so that I'm going to be able to have one inch boxes and they're going to be, be perfect squares and not rectangles. So the width and the height of each square is going to be the same. And I'm dragging this table to fill my piece of paper. Um, you can usually get it to have the line turn red when you're right on the edge of the paper, but it doesn't work every time. So just try as best as you can. If you click off to the side, it gets rid of the blue border and you can see a little bit easier. Up at the top, it looks like it's slightly off. So I'm just gonna work with it and try to get it to be exactly lined up on my paper. I think that looks still a little off. Let's see what I can do. Okay, close enough. So there is my grid. Now I'm ready to put my picture in. So I'm going to go insert image from my drive. That's where I have it saved. 
And here's the picture I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And you can see right now that the picture I chose doesn't match my paper perfectly, right? And so what I need to do is crop and, and size this, resize this image so that it fills the entire piece of paper. Otherwise, what's going to happen with my drawing is I'm going to have a bunch of space up here where I don't know how to do the drawing because I don't have a reference photo to work from. And I'm going to have a bunch of space down here where it just kind of cuts off and I don't fill the page. And that never looks good. So um, what I would recommend doing is uh, consider cropping off the sides or like in this picture, her head is cropped off. And so I really want to make it that that it, that meets the edge of the paper, not that I have it just like randomly aligned with the bottom and then just um, drawing the top. If you don't have the top of the head cut off and you want to just have this be extra background space up here, you could make it that work and you wouldn't have to resize the picture. What you don't want to do is stretch your picture. So I grabbed it from the top and I filled the page that way and you can see it distorted the picture. It is not, it, she looks like stretched out and squished. And so I'm going to undo that and that's correct uh, dimensions and proportions on the photograph. I'm going to resize it by pulling from this corner. So you can do all four corners. You can't resize it from the, um, the top, bottom, or the sides. Those are the ones that will distort it. So taking it from the, sort, the corner, it stays in proportion. I'm filling it to the top of the page. Now it fills the page top to bottom, but I know that I've got a bunch hanging off that's now bigger than my paper. Um, the easiest way to be able to fit it on the page is to make your picture a little bit transparent. So I'm going to click on my picture, choose Format Options, Adjustments, and then under Transparency, I'm going to move that to about the halfway point. So like 50% see-through or transparent. Now I can see both the picture and the paper, and I'm going to click on my picture and move it around. And knowing that I'm going to end up cropping whatever's hanging off the sides of the paper. So um, I think I think about here, I'm okay with cropping. I like the curls in her hair on the on um, her left side, so. I might just keep it where it lines up with the left and then I crop off everything to the right. For you, if you want, you can always move it over and crop from both sides. So it just depends on how you want to fit the composition of the paper. Okay, then I'm gonna choose this crop icon and clicking on the black bar, this is where it's tricky, you wanna get the black bar and not the blue square. Click that black bar and bring it into the edge of the paper. That is gonna crop it. If you accidentally get the blue square, you're going to see it's going to start squishing the picture because you're you're just distorting the dimensions of the picture and not actually cropping. Okay, so I'm good with that crop. I can either hit return or enter on my keyboard or just click in this gray margin near the background. And then I want to make sure that picture is no longer see-through. So I'm going to bring it all the way back to the left, make it fully opaque. And then I'm done adjusting that photo. It fits the page exactly. But right now I can't see my grid. So the last thing I need to do is go up to Arrange, Order, Send Backwards or to the back. It doesn't matter which one. We only have two layers in there. And now my grid is in the front and my portrait is in the back and I can see both. I am going to make sure I can see these grid lines. And right now they're gray and they're kind of blending in because she has a gray shirt and they don't stand out as much as I'd like them to. So I'm going to click on the, the grid. And right now when I've clicked, I'm only selecting this box. Instead, I want to select the entire thing. So I'll click again on the blue frame that surrounds the whole grid. And now I've got the entire table or grid selected. And then this pencil right here, the border color, is going to be how I can change the lines. So I can try black, see how well that shows up. Um, I'm thinking maybe like this green will show up well. Um, something that just is enough different from the colors that you have in there or this bright yellow orange. So pick a color that you think is gonna work and then uh, just make sure that you've titled this. So I'm gonna call this uh, portrait uh, drawing unit or drawing project. And then it's just gonna automatically save to my drive. And that way I don't need a printer. I can just work directly from the screen. 
Um, I can save it if I want an easier way of looking at this. I can download it as a JPEG. And then I can much easier um, see this. I can, you know, make it take up my whole screen and and make it much larger so that when I'm working on my drawing, I can zoom way in and and adjust that a lot easier. Okay, so that is how to set up a grid over a reference photo in Google Drawings so you can use it for the portrait drawing unit.